Hi there, I'm Steven Squally. I'm the game developer and illustrator behind Squirmish, the card game of Brawling Beasties, recently published by GameRight. We're going to show you how to play Squirmish today. And first we'll open the box and see what's inside. We've got the rule book here. We've got a deck of 70 different cards. Every card is unique. They have they all have different characters with different abilities, different battle cries, different attacks. Then we've got our damage counters here. We've got four dice. So if you look in the rule book here, you have the anatomy of a squirmish card, which kind of shows you what the kind of thing that's on each card. You can see here each card has its starting hit points in the circle at the top, which says how many hit points that card has. It has a moniker, which would be the character's name, so this is Cupcake. It's got a card number, which is just to keep track of the cards and organize them. Then you've got your basic attack. You roll a die to determine what your basic attack does. This one, on a 1, it does 1 damage. 2 to 3, it does 2 damage. 4 to 5, it does 3 damage, and then down here is the special attack. On 6, it does its special attack, which is usually extra good and has some, some bonus. Then down at the bottom here is the battle cry of this card, which is what, what you say to get a plus 1 to your attack when you make an attack the first time you're attacking with that card. So if this card says, I'll do anything for a cupcake, or if you say that for that card when you when you attack with it, and you'll get plus one healing or plus one damage to your attack. And then over here is the card's special ability, which this card has an uh, ability called Sprinkly Winkly. When this card is attacked, you draw a card, and you can see that's a defensive ability because it's got a little shield next to it. There are attacking abilities, which happen when you're attacking with that card, defensive abilities that happen when you're defending that card, and then weird abilities, which can happen anytime depending on what the ability is. Then he's got another defensive ability over here, but that is his group ability. So that only comes into play when more than one member of his group is in play. And you can tell groups by the color of the border of the card. Mm -hmm. So all the cards with this light yellow border are members of the Kitty Cat Club. And all the members of the Kitty Cat Club have the same ability, which isn't always true with groups, but with the Kitty Cat Club it is. They all have the ability that they can't be attacked by a Kitty Cat Club member. And those group abilities become active when more than one member of that group is in play. We've got the sequence of play at the bottom. This is what you do every turn. First you attack, then you resolve any abilities, then you place a card or move a card if you wish, and then finally you draw a card if you wish. So you're going to do that every turn of Squirmish. <laughs> Do you want to add anything? Nope. Okay, well let's then let's play. play. Okay, so we're going to play a game of Squirmish. We dealt out six cards to each player. Then we've got our, our uh, draw pile here. We will take the top card off of that to start our discard pile. We've got our damage counters here. And then we've got dice here. We'll each take one die to, to roll with. Then we've each got six cards in our hands to start with. Let's take a look at our cards and familiarize ourselves with them. Kind of want to read through them a little bit to see what makes sense. I, so, we're each going to place a card face down to begin with. The card that has the lowest hit points goes first. I'm going to put this card face down to begin with. I'm going to put this. Okay, let's flip them. Okay. So, the hit points are indicated by the number inside of the circle at the upper left. So you can see my friend here has seven hit points. I have eight hit points on my Betty Biscuit card. And you can also see that we each have our cards facing ourselves. That's how you keep track of who controls what cards in the mass of cards in the middle of the table, which is called the squirmish. So, you go first. What are you okay. going to do? So first I'm going to attack. Right. Which I roll a die, yep. and I also want to say the um, battle cry. Battle cry, and that gives you plus one on your first 
attacking yep. attempt. First time you're attacking with a card, you want to say the battle cry, but you didn't say it. Mine, 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 mine. You okay. got an extra mine in there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm gonna roll, and I got a one, so I got no effect. Class. Okay. So next, I'm going to resolve abilities. So he's got. What does his ability say? Hit point heist. On your turn, you can take. Take as much damage as you wish off of one other card and put it on this one. So that doesn't apply yet. You don't have any other okay, cards. Okay, next so. I can place a card or move. Um, I'm going to place a card. I'm going to place Rapscallion. Okay. Now you can place cards anywhere around the perimeter of the squirmish. So she chose to place it next to Betty Biscuit here. She could have placed it here. She could have placed it here, 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 or there. So it's kind of in a grid. Cards can generally only attack cards that are adjacent to them. So to the top, bottom, left, or right. They can't attack diagonally, and they can't attack cards that are off farther away from them than one card. So... So next, I'm going to draw a card, and then that would be the end of my turn. Okay, so now it's my turn. So for my turn, I only have one card out, Betty Biscuit, so I start with attacking. And Betty Biscuit is going to choose to attack Rapscallion, because Rapscallion has six hit points, whereas Steeler Grabber has seven hit points, so he should be easier to knock out. You can see, also, with their abilities, He's got a little sword next to his ability. He's got a little spiral next to his ability. She's also got a sword next to her ability. The ones with swords are attacking abilities. There are ones with shields that are defensive abilities. And those happen when you're attacking or defending. But the ones that, ha that are weird, those can happen when they're appropriate. So, Betty Biscuit will say her battle cry, so she gets plus one to her attack. She says, don't meth with the Biscuit Sisters. And she says that because she's a member of the Biscuit Sisterhood. That's her group. We'll talk more about groups in a little bit. Okay, so she's going to do her basic attack down the side here. She rolls a five, which does. You can see on one, she does one damage. On two to five, she does two damage. So she does two damage plus one for saying, don't meth with the Biscuit Sisters. And then... Also, she's got a special attacking ability. It says Rubber Biscuit does two times damage to cards that attacked last round. Well, I should have been thinking about that, because I, if I had attacked Steeler Grabber, I would have got two times damage on my attack. But as it is, I attacked Rapscallion, so I did three damage. I would have done six damage to him. Too late now. Okay, so I'll take my three damage counters and put them on Rapscallion. Put those over his eyeballs. So it looks like he's been punched. Then I need to resolve any special abilities. I don't have any to resolve right now. Then I can place or move a card. I'm going to place Chimpernot right there. And then I'm going to draw a card and finish my turn. All right, so it's my turn now. I'm going to attack with Rapscallion to Betty Biscuit. And he says for his plus one, his battle cry, was that behind you? So I'm going to roll. And I got a two. That's one damage plus one is two damage. Okay, and she has no defensive abilities, so she doesn't protect herself at all from that. He, he also has a, an attacking ability here. You can see Hooligan. If you knock out your own cards with this card, you can add them to your victory pile. That doesn't apply to this attack, but if she was, a, say she was attacking with Rapscallion to Steeler Grabber and knocked him out, she could put that card in her victory pile. Now to win the game, you want to have three cards in your victory pile. Generally, you can only put an opponent's cards in your victory pile if you knock them out. But this guy, if you knock out your own cards with this card, then those can go in your victory pile as well. That's his special ability. Okay, so I'm now going to resolve any abilities. So this guy has, on your turn, you can take as much damage as you wish off one other card and put it on this one. 
Um, I think I'm going to take one damage off Rapscallion and put it on Steelworker. Good thinking. And now I'm going to place a card or move. I'm going to place Crazy Frank right here. Okay. And to end my turn, I will draw a card. Sounds good. For my turn, I'm going to attack with Chimpernaut. Now, as I mentioned before, generally you can only attack with cards that are adjacent to you. However, Chimpernaut has a special ability called Banana Rocket, which says this card can attack diagonally and does two times damage when doing so. So he's going to attack Rapscallion, because he can attack diagonally. Nice. Oh, and I better say his battle cry or I won't get my plus one. So he says, This is one small slap for monkey, one great bop for monk kind. Aw. No effect. No effect. Alas, he does nothing. Nothing at all. Okay, so now I resolve any special abilities that I have to resolve. I don't have any to resolve right now. So I can place another card, which I want to do. And I'm going to place Kangaroo. And then I will draw a card. And that is the end of my turn. So now it's your turn again. Okay, so first I'm going to attack. So I'm going to attack Betty Biscuit with Steeler Grab. Okay. So I'm going to roll. And I got a five. So that did two damage. And you notice she did not say her battle cry for that because you only say your battle cry the first time you use a card to attack with. And she has already attacked with Steeler Grabber before. Yes. Okay, so I attacked and now I'm going to resolve any abilities. Okay. Um, I don't have any abilities to resolve. And I'm going to place a card. I'm going to place... Kilgore the Conqueror. Oh my goodness. Right, let's say, right here. Okay. Now, Kilgore the Conqueror only has one hit point, which makes it seem like he'd be really easy to destroy, but yeah, he's, he's not that easy to destroy, and he does a lot of damage. Yeah, his attack. He's got some nasty attacks. And also he has a defense. Um, yep. Special event. Mm -hmm. And my turn, I'm going to draw a card. Okay, well, I don't like Kilgore being here, so I'm going to see if I can take him out of the game. I'm going to have Chimpernaut try and attack Kilgore. Uh, he's already said his battle cry, so there's no point in saying that again. He rolls a two, which does one damage, which is sufficient for knocking out Kilgore. However, Kilgore has a special ability called Cute Whittle Fella. Roll when this card is attacked. On four to six, the attack fails. So I will roll and see if it fails. And it does. Ah, uh, so my attack did no good. Now I will resolve any special abilities, which mm, I don't have any special abilities to resolve right now. So I will place a card. I will place the Knockless Monster. Mm. And I'll put them there. What the heck. And then I will draw a card, and that will be the end of my turn. Now it is your turn again. Alright, so first I'm going to attack. I'm going to attack Betty Biscuit with Kilgore the Conqueror, and I don't want to forget his battle cry, which is the blood of mine enemies shall flood the streets of their ancestors. So now I'm going to roll. I got a six. Ooh, ouch. If opponent has five cards in play, knock out. Otherwise, seven damage. Which That's is still plenty of damage yeah. to knock out Betty Biscuit. Okay. That now, goes in my victory pile. So. Yep, so you got the first card in your victory pile. Mm -hmm. You need two more to win now, because you need three cards in your victory mm -hmm. pile to win. So now we've got two little islands of separate squirmishes here, and we need them to all be one squirmish. So we need to reattach our cards. 
uh, since it's her turn, she gets to choose which island she wants to reattach car her cards to first. So why don't you go ahead and do that? Mm -hmm. And then it would go around clockwise because it's a two to four player game. So in a four player game, you'd go to the next player to, to the left and then so on around the table okay, until everyone's gonna, cards were reattached. I'm going to replace Stealer gra Grabber here and I'm taking Rat Scallion there. Okay, and I will place Kangarooty since Kangarooty's my card. I'm going to place Kangarooty right there. Okay. Alright, next I resolve abilities. Um, I do have one ability to resolve, but I don't want to do it this turn. Okay. Um, I'm going to place a card. I'm going to place Flip and Flop right here. Okay. And then to end my turn, I will draw a card. Sounds good. So now it's back to my turn. Well, I guess I will have Kangarooty attack this time. And Kangaroo is going to attack Rapscallion and say, uh, says her battle cry, which is Baby Rudy got to shiv. Two. So she does two damage, plus one for saying her battle cry, which does three damage. And she's got a special ability on attacks, which is Little Rudy is the little guy inside her pouch here. Roll again after this card attacks on five to six, two damage to any adjacent card. So I can do two more damage if I roll that to either that card or that card, which would knock out Rapscallion. So I would put it on Rapscallion if I make this roll. So five, to, five or six, and I get two more damage. Oh, Yay. I did not knock out Rapscallion. So do I have any other special abilities I need to resolve? I do not. So, I will place a card, and I'm going to choose to place Fig Boot. Fig Boot is the second member I have in play from the Spooner Valley Cryptids. They're both members of that group, and now that two of them are in play, that group is activated. So, active groups have a second special ability called their group ability, and the Spooner Valley Cryptids all have the same group ability. It says, Spooner Valley Cryptids, to attack this card, you must first roll above the number of Spooner Valley Cryptids in play. So you can't attack either of these cards now until you've rolled above, the, uh, above a two, because there are two of them in play. All right. Uh, so, okay. So I placed a card, now I will draw a card, and that finishes my turn. Okay, so now it's your turn. Okay, so I'm going to attack, and I'm going to attack the Knockless Monster with Kilgore the Conqueror. Okay, and so again, since he's a Spooner Valley Cryptid, you got to roll above a 2 to do your attack. Okay. And I did. Okay. So now I roll my regular yeah. roll. Six. Oh. The opponent has five cards in play, knockout, otherwise seven damage. So you I have do have five cards in play, don't I? One, two, three, four. So four. Oh. There's a maximum number of cards that you can have in play. You can have up to five cards in play at a time in the skirmish, And also there's a hand limit of five cards. Okay, now I'm going to resolve any abilities. So I'm going to have this one take... Two damage off. Off of Rap Scallion. Yes. Yep. Yep. That's a handy ability there. And put it on Steel or Grabber. Yep. Next, I'm going to place a card. Since I have five. You have five cards in play now, I believe. Let's double check. One, two, three, four, five. So you can't place another card, but. You can choose to replace a card, which means she could take a card from her hand and put it, replace it uh, with one of the cards she has that has no damage on it, which she could then discard. So if she didn't want Crazy Frank anymore, she could put another card in its place and discard Crazy Frank. I'm starting with Coco at the cross. Yeah, but I don't think you want to get rid of him. No. I, or I could just 
move, which I think I'm going to move. So moving is basically moving the positions of two adjacent cards to each other's positions. You just swap the positions of two cards. Okay, so I'm going to swap these two cards. Okay. And then to finish my turn, I'm going to draw a card. But now I have six cards in my hand, and the hand limit is five cards. So I'm going to discard a card. I'm going to discard Brain. Okay. So for my turn, oh, I think I'm going to try and get Kilgore out again this turn. Knockless Monster says his battle cry, nobody's home. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rolls a six. That does his special attack, which is lock mess. Does five damage and draw a card for your hand. So I'll, I'll start by drawing a card for my hand before we roll whether Kilgore is going to be able to dodge that attack. And I, then I will discard a card. Discard this card, I guess. So now why don't you see if Kilgore actually takes that damage? He does. Ah, so I knocked that Okay, now we each have one card in our victory pile. These cards have to be reattached. I'm going to go ahead and reattach the Knockless Monster somewhere where he can't be easily attacked since he's taken so much damage. So I'll put him out there. I'm going to attach Steel Breath. I, th yeah. I thought you might do that. Yeah. Okay. And then I need to resolve any special abilities. I do not have any ones to resolve right now. I don't want to place a card right now. I'm happy with what I got, but I might move a card. Yeah, I will move a card. I'll move Knockless Monster where you can't attack him at all. Okay, so... And then I draw a card. And that completes your turn. And that completes my turn. Oh, except I got to discard one. I will discard... Well, I'll discard that one. It's so. my turn, mm -hmm. then. I think I'm going to attack Kangaroo with Rapscallion. Okay. And I'm going to roll. I got a six. Oh my goodness. Three damage plus one damage if you control the attacked card. Okay, but so that's three damage. Okay. Now do you have any special abilities to resolve? I do have one, but I don't think I want to use it. This one. Okay. So I'm going to place a card or move. I can't place a card because, actually I can. Yeah, that kill was knocked up. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to place the boogeyman. Okay. Right. Oh. There. Now the knockless monster can be attacked again. Okay. And uh, to complete my turn, I'm going to draw a card. Okay, so it's my turn. So I will attack with Chimpernaut to wrap Scallion. Okay. Chimpernaut's already said his battle cry, so I can't say that. Anymore. Rolls a six, three damage, and move this card. Well, and he does two times damage attacking diagonally, so Rapscallion is decimated. Yeah. So that's two cards in my victory pile, and now I have to move Chimpernaut. So I will move him. I'll move him right there. So now I would resolve any special abilities I have to resolve. I don't have any to resolve right now. Then I will place a card or move a card. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to place or remove this turn. And then I'll draw a card. Okay, so it's my turn now. I'll attack Chimpernaut with the Boogeyman. Okay. And his plus one battle cry is... Theremin music. So it's like... Plus one is four damage. Okay. And Chimpernaut has no defense. So he takes all that damage. And next, 
I resolve any abilities. Um, I have this ability, but I have no cards that have damage, damage on them, yeah. so I can't use that special ability. And I will place a card or move. I'm going to place it right here. Okay, let's scoot that over a little. I will draw a card to end my turn, and it's your turn. For my turn, I'm going to have Fig Boot attack Stealer Grabber. Oh, but I do want to say his battle cry because he hasn't attacked yet. He says, I get a kick out of you. Three. So he does three damage plus one is four damage. And that knocks out the Stealer Grabber, who has no defense, which is the third card in my victory pile. So I win the game. Yeah. Good game. Yeah, good game. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for watching the video.